hello, welcome, Gemstone Tarot. This is a mid-September reading. I'm gonna start with Aries, I'm gonna go through to Pisces, and we're gonna timestamp it. So if you look in the description box, there will be a timestamp for your star sign. Check out your sun, your moon, and your rising sign. You can scooch between with your finger as well along the bottom of the video in chapters. Okay, nice. Using the Anna K Tarot today. Love this deck, I haven't used it for a while, Crocodile, but we're using it now. We're gonna look at love life, we're gonna look at career, we're gonna look at Mercury retrograde, because it is for the next kind of three weeks or so. We're just gonna see what's what and who's who for you, okay? Also, do check out my membership, which is the Gem Stars. We're having a great time over at the Gem Stars. We're doing, um, done an individual card pool for people that joined, that's been really good. That's ongoing as well. I think we're on part nine of that. It's been very popular. Um, we do members only live stream. It's the only place that I live stream at the moment. And we do pick a cards, love readings, and whatever else takes our fancy. So if you wanna join that, there's a link in the description box. Check it out. Okay, Aries, let's go. What do we need to know for Aries? Sun, moon, rising, oh gosh, or Venus. Okay. I'm going to point the camera down and hopefully you'll see the cards and not some pair of knickers on my floor. That's what normally happens. Not bad, not bad. Some dodgy wires, what we've got there, an old cloth, dodgy wires, uh, some plugs. Yeah, it's not bad for me. Could be worse, Aries, could be worse. Right, let's get the cards in view. Swing and put them together. Aries, this is not your normal kind of vibe. Aries obviously is the ram and it's fire and I think it's cardinal, which means that you start things and you, you know, get things going and come on everyone and your leadership and all that. There's something here during this time with Mercury being in retrograde and whatever else is going on over the next couple of weeks where you're going to be contemplating what's worth it and what's not, who's with you and who's not and what do you need to move on from and what do you need to keep. I think belonging, if you look here we've got in my wonky cards the five of pentacles, okay? This five of pentacles is, these people can come in to the church where there's a lighted window, there's warmth, and they don't. They stay outside in the snow. And clearly they could do with being inside and having a big sandwich and a cup of tea in the church, but they don't do it, okay? When you get the five of pentacles, Aries, you too are not willing to uh, just fall into your comfort zone. So if this was in a job for you, you're not willing to do it just for the paycheck. Or if you do have to do it just for the paycheck, the next couple of weeks sees you questioning the future and whether that could change, okay? Whether you could truly find a place where you belong. If this is to do with relationships as well, it's the same. If someone isn't with you, they're kind of against you in this. So if somebody has not been showing up for you, or they've not been on the same page as you, I just don't think you're going to want to stick around with them, even if that means, and the Five of Pentacles always talks of this, discomfort, you know, not pretending or not being in denial. I mean, Aries don't pretend much and don't do denial much, but even so, everyone as a human wants to be comfortable you're prepared to make yourself uncomfortable to see a change in relationships and or work or both actually. Four of Swords over here, again, is a card of finding peace and rest and a place of contemplation and generally peace is the word. You wanna feel good about yourself and you wanna feel good about what you're doing. And you can really use the next couple of weeks to meditate on this, to do however you do it. Some people meditate, some people think about it while they're running. Doesn't matter, but remember the star in the middle, okay? The star card comes when the universe wants you to think big, 
dream big and follow your star, which is cheesy. We could put it on a tea towel, but at the same time, true, okay? The universe wants you to follow your star. It wants you to have the very best and not to settle. I think that would be the buzzword for you, Aries for the, the whole of the next two weeks is do not settle, okay? Thank you, Aries. Okay, we move on to, she says, can I remember the star signs? Taurus, I can hopefully. Hi, Taurus. What do we need to know for lovely Taurus? Sun, moon, rising, Venus, cross watchers, Woof. Nice. That's a very Taurian card, actually. That's strange, because Aries got that in exactly the same place. Woof. They didn't get that, though. Right, let's just fiddly bop out a little bit, because it, then it won't be hidden behind the box. That's a bit better. And if I put them here, we can see them all properly. Because these cards are worth seeing, aren't they? Okay. Never get them straight. Taurus, you've got the Empress, which is Venus energy, which is also Taurus and Libra energy. But you also have the star. And this is sort of similar to the Aries reading in a way, but what it's saying to you is that you are already in the process of making something big, okay? The Empress, obviously, often um, about pregnancy, about making something, about storing things and storing for the future, you know, and giving birth to new ideas, giving birth literally, this is very fruitful for you. So this could be about relationships, could be an Aquarius as well, or a Libra or another Taurus, um, because we've got the star card and that is Aquarius. But I think also the star card is the wishing on a star card. And I feel like that's going to happen for you. I feel like there's going to be the ability, and I think you've been doing this already, but what Mercury Retrograde brings to you is the opportunity to go back and try something that you thought of before. It might be an idea that you had about a relationship. It might be um, to do with a business or a side hustle or something like that. You had an idea before, or maybe it was a dream, and I think you put it to one side or shelved it. And the universe is saying to you, do more of that, go back to it, redo it. Remember retrograde, anything with re, redo it, retry, reconstruct, revisit, okay? Then we got the Seven of Swords. Now, I'm looking at the direction that people are looking in, the Empress is looking straight at you. The star card hasn't got a main person in it. And the Seven of Swords, of course, is looking at what they can get away with. There's two meanings to me for this. One, there may be somebody who doesn't quite have your best interests at heart. I don't get a very strong sense of this, I must say. But the other sense that I get, and this happens with the Seven of Swords, is that you also might need to behave I don't mean sneakily, but I've said sneakily. Um, <laughs> what I'm saying is you may need to play your cards close to your chest and not be as open as you normally are as a Taurus um, because sometimes you have to be this way to get, what, get forward. And it's not something Taurians normally do. You're a fixed earth sign, you're pretty out there and up front. Don't be too upfront about your plans, whether it's to do with love, relationships or work. Don't be too upfront. Move when you need to move. Speak when you need to speak. And for the rest of the time, keep still, observe, keep doing what you're doing and strike when the time is right. Interesting for you, Taurus. Wowzers. Okay, thank you, Taurus. Gemini. Hello, Gemini. How are you doing? Your readings have been really interesting recently. 
if you want to check out any of your star sign readings they're all in the description box so the Gemini one is there if you want to see it or September for the rest of the month as well okay what do we need to know mid month messages for Gemini Ooh. Itchy nose already, Gemini. Ooh. Interesting. Right, let's try and get them straight. Whatever I do, Gemini, I can't get the cards straight on camera. I don't know what that's all about. Okay. Beautiful card, so let's have a look at it, the Hermit. This is not a very Gemini card, but we all have this in us, okay? Now, we are in Mercury retrograde. It does retro kind of stuff to us. The Hermit traditionally is a card where you take yourself off to the edge of society or you go off to your cave or wherever it is. For me, it would be the sofa, okay? The sofa pair of elasticated trousers and mind numbing stuff on Netflix. That would be my hermit stuff. So that's the modern take on it. The universe wants you to see something, it wants you to see something about a situation that you're in that you've either been slightly misinformed or you just, your mind frame or your mindset is more severe than it would need to be. If you look in the middle, we've got the Eight of Swords, which is actually Jupiter in Gemini. And Jupiter is a planet that wants to expand. It wants to expand, it wants freedom, okay? There's a situation here where you need to be free to be yourself. And I'm guessing this is in relationships for you and for some reason, when she looks in the mirror, she sees herself like all tied up and unable to move when actually it's not quite the case. There may be a conversation during the next couple of weeks that ties you in knots a little bit. It's Mercury retrograde. These things happen. Whatever this convert, and it may have already slightly happened with somebody, it could be a fire sign, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, or somebody who is quite confident in themselves. It feels like you, because um, Geminis can communicate really well. See, I can't communicate this to you. You've got something to say to somebody. They've got something to say to you. You particularly have something to say to them and it may not come out right, okay? If you look here, she's kind of following the King of Wands who's going off the edge of the table. This may be somebody that has put a bit of distance or a bit of miscommunication between you and them, um, and you want to unravel it, but you feel raveled up yourself, and that's why you find it difficult to talk to this person. They may always seem on the edge of your getting or the edge of your understanding or just on the distance, you know, there's some sort of distance. Then this hermit card is telling you, Gemini, to almost stop. Stop moving towards the goal. Stop moving towards the relationship, the job, whatever it is. And sit back down as the hermit. Don't worry about how you're coming across you know, or what you look like, or any of those sorts of things, this is a time for you to absolutely go within, which Geminis and Pisceans, because we're both mutable, you're air, we're water, but we're both mutable, we don't really like going within. It's like, do anything, we're, we're always going without, you know, it's like uh, being sociable, being distracted, all of those things appeal to us, but this is about being calm, being quiet, being Virgo, like the Hermit, and taking on board what the universe wants to tell you before you go back and talk to this person, okay? It's a very specific message for you. It could be to do with talking to a boss at work as well, but I think for most of you it's to do with relationships. You need to feel free before you can move forward, and you need to feel in your power, okay? 
work on that in the next two weeks in the best way that you can and you'll get really good results Gemini love that for you okay see you soon Cancer hello my lovely Cancerians how are you doing so do check out you've got the bonus reading I do a bonus reading for my highest viewing sign and every month it's you so every month you get bonus love reading so that's a half hour free reading for you and it's up there you can have a look in the description box maybe if not it will be on the channel under videos okay so what do we need to know for lovely cancerians so this is like a bonus bonus for you a bonus bonus do come and check out the gem stars as well because i like to have oh look all the yellow I like to have a lot of Cancerians in, in the membership because it just makes for a, a better group experience. Cancerians are more generous with comments and less negative. I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass, it's true. A lot of Cancerians support other people in my membership and it's nice, I really like it. Okay. I can see the energies for this Mercury retrograde. It's quite, it's quite contemplative. It's going to really suit you as a Cancerian. We've got the sun. So you've got the luck and you've got the radiance, which we like. You may be dealing with Leos, Aries, Sagittarians. It is the sign that rules, uh, the planet that rules Leo. But I think any fire sign may feature in your life but also the sun in general. It's just one of the most gorgeous cards because it just gives you health, prosperity, um, radiance. It's kind of shining on you. It's lovely, okay? Don't, don't knock it. Don't kick it out of bed for eating crisps. So we have sun energy. Make the most of that. Maybe you want to get outside a bit. Maybe you want to just bask in the glory of looking out of the window, but it's a very positive, lovely card. Then we have the Empress. This has come up a lot. The Empress is essentially, she's got all the harvest and she's to do with crops and growing and fertility and things coming along in a good way. So we love this. But also I feel like there's something that you're learning during this Mercury retrograde time. And it's kind of slow, but it's very fruitful so you could be learning a new skill a new hobby for some of you though it's a new mindset it's a new sense of self-worth we've got the hermit going on here as well so virgo energy you could be um, involved here with virgos or taurians because the empress is taurus libra virgo but i feel most of all that this is the energy of going within okay going within and enjoying that spirituality that you Cancerians have and finding answers to it that strengthen your cause, okay? If this is to do with relationships, you need to be in your powerful feminine energy and you don't need to make it external. You don't need to make statements. You don't need to, you know, sorry, pretend anything or exercise external power. This is all about the power within the power within you to create. For a lot of you, this is coming up as a side hustle or a hobby or something you can do that's gonna be quite fruitful and successful, okay? So enjoy the sunshine, like literally metaphorically that's coming to you. Enjoy your ideas, give them credence as well. And also enjoy, I mean, you're very good at alone time and me time. So enjoy the alone time and revel in the me time because it's going to be very good for you and it's going to really improve your prospects. Oh, I love this, Cancerians. So go and check out your bonus mid-month reading and enjoy it. Thank you. Okay, Leo. Hello, Leo. What do you need to know? I think you had a pretty bumper reading actually for your September reading. If I remember rightly and I kind of do a bit seems like such a long time ago Leo what do we need to know for Leo Sun Moon rising Venus 
not a lot of fast moving energy while we've got mercury retrograde at all we've got the chariot first of all and the chariot is cancerian energy so this could be around home and family um but also with the chariot it's being wanting to go in two different directions at the same time now while mercury is retrograde i tend to find that you can go in two different directions at the same time but you may feel that you're spreading yourself a bit thin. I feel like for some of you, there are people who are relying on you or demanding your time. It could be work versus family or relationship versus family versus work, whatever it is. There's a feeling of conflict here and it may really come up for you during the Mercury retrograde time. We've got the Nine of Swords in the middle, which again is usually when you're mentally conflicted um, overthinking slightly and it feels like we've got sort of new moons that pop up in both of these cards. It feels like between the full moon that happens on the 10th in Pisces or happened on the 10th in Pisces and moving forward to the new moon in Virgo. Let me have a look when that is for you. I think it's in Virgo actually. I, I better double check myself. I'm always making making claims of course it isn't it's in libra i'll stop saying it new moon in libra okay which is also when mercury retrograde is sort of it's in virgo by then and it's a bit less difficult i feel like you've got two weeks of back and forth back and forth with something so you may be arguing with a loved one or a special person you may be not arguing, but putting forward an idea, they're putting forward an idea. There's a dialogue. It could be at work that there's their way of doing it, your way of doing it, their way of doing it, your way of doing it. And expect it to cause some friction, but also you're breaking new ground here. We've got the Two of Swords. And the Two of Swords says to you, it's not supposed to happen yet. Okay, the reason why you're almost stuck in this duality of one thing and another, which in a relationship could be stay or go, or it's good or it's bad or whatever. While you're stuck in this du duality, make the most of it because actually what you're doing is digging out a new future that hasn't happened yet. When you get the two of swords, it's two aces of swords, it's two good things, but you're creating a third way and you can't know what that is yet. Okay, that's just the way that things go. You can't know what that new way is yet. Okay, so if you feel a bit under pressure, you are a bit under pressure. But these long dark nights of the soul, they're going somewhere for you. But don't expect it to happen too fast. Okay, I would say look out for something breaking, um, like, you know, dawn breaking, for something breaking good. Um, around the 25th of September, okay? And until then, hang in there, okay? Hang in there, leave me a comment. Let me know how that resonates, Leo. Hi, Virgo. Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. What do we need to know for my lovely Virgos? Oh, what a beautiful card that is. Okay, just colour-wise, we can see what's going on with this. It's quite icy and sombre in the beginning, but thank God we're moving into yellow. And I love a bit of yellow in tarot. It's always victory. Okay, it's always good, it's always optimistic. The full card is normally yellow because it's a new beginning. So we have the Queen of Swords and we have the Six of Swords. 
there may be some and there is for everybody i think during this time there may be some issues to solve or a bit of strife queen of swords may be somebody that you know that you're involved with could be an air sign gemini libra aquarius or just somebody who is seemingly being a bit harsh but actually kind of wants to help you with it with their harshness in other words they may be telling you some home truths you might not like it but in my experience the people who do this it's a better idea to at least think to yourself is there anything in what they're saying it feels like it could be somebody at work for some of you with the queen of swords it feels like someone very intelligent wants to help you with something it could be an application you know it could be getting advice off somebody but then we move to the six of swords we've got two sixes here which is rather good and you break free on the six of swords and you get out of whatever was kind of holding you back here i think now also what the queen of swords wants to do is teach you how to have boundaries virgos and i say this a lot virgos can be too much in the i mean virgos are the sign of service and you like helping people and people like you helping them but there does come a time sometimes when you have to say no and this is represented by the queen of swords sword okay and there's either someone here who can help you by helping you or the fact is they're so sharp with you that you end up telling them to sod off anyway either way it gets you onto the raft okay and i like it and that takes you to victory so you're no longer caught up as the servant in a situation and this could be in relationships it could be um, in work but either way you're no longer the servant of a situation you become the victor god love that for you virgo leave me a comment let me know how that resonates with you thank you virgo okay libra Libra, Libra, Libra. God, I've shuffled so well, but this card has come up for everybody. Every single person, I think, so far. Now, retrograde, Mercury is retrograde in your sign. So this is going to be some soul searching for you, I can see. Right. Look at this. Two majors out of three for a start. Spiritual big jobs are declared. You've got this Empress energy here and you've got the Five of Cups and you've got this Scorpionic and rather beautiful Death card, okay? so this is a time of great growth over the next two or three weeks for you empress represents you and taurus it's venus energy you need to harness your feminine energy over the next two to three weeks because that's where your power lies okay five of cups the universe wants you to grieve what you've lost and to recognize what you've lost but at the same time, know what lies in front of you as well, okay? Not an easy thing to do. Things are changing for you, Libra. This death card is inviting you to leave the old and the worn out and anything that stunts your growth or doesn't fit or isn't healthy behind. But as humans, just like we don't like chucking out favourite pairs of old shoes for ages, etc. We don't like chucking out comforting favourite people or comforting favourite situations. Death card rather insists that you do. So I think what's going to happen, Libra, is that Mercury Retrograde is going to produce uh, opportunities and circumstances for you to let go of things 
that no longer serve you, okay? When you have done this, the Empress is in you, is ready to create new things that are healthier and more you-centered. It's all for you to do with self-worth during this Mercury retrograde. You need to step into your own shoes and realize the power of who you are, the feminine power of who you are. Don't need to be shouting it from the rooftops, that's not your style, but feel it from within, okay? And be prepared for quite big change, possibly with water signs, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio being central to that change, okay? Oh, Libra, juicy, leave me a comment. Let me know how that resonates. Thank you, Libra. Scorpio, Scorpio. Oops. Scorpio. That one. Scorpio, third card for you. Oh, nice. Okay. Chariots. So all change in lots of ways and all stay the same. This is weird. Mercury retrograde does this. You can have two things at the same time, two paths at the same time. One, and there's two horses riding this, uh, steering the chariot. One goes in one direction, one goes in another direction. You're learning to ride two horses with one ass here and only a Scorpio could manage to do that. So you've got it here, you've got this, but it's not very easy. It could be conflict within a relationship. It could be conflict within yourself. For a lot of you, you're looking for a better life in a way. And I mean that in the broadest sense, a life or a love that you can enjoy more, that you can be yourself with more, but also better wealth, better security, better ideas, and more control over what's happening. And within this chaos that's coming up for you in Mercury retrograde is the answer to that. We've got the Ace of Pentacles. Love the Ace of Pentacles. It's just such a good, honest card. And also, <laughs> It means money, money, <laughs> it means money. So it's, it can be new money, but the idea has probably been with you a while. It can be investing, it can just be learning how to manage your money so that it grows rather than stays the same or it disappears. Look into this, okay, in, with, with different financial experts of which I am not, but you have an opportunity here, it could be an income stream, it could be revenue, it could be a business or promotion at work. You have the opportunity here to make it more relevant, more successful and more dynamic. Then we have the Knight of Swords, air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Some of you there may be relationship conflict with an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. They're leaving the scene here but I think they say something at the same time. So there could be a conversation where you're a bit torn between two things. You wanna to listen to them, but you wanna shout at them. You wanna hear what they have to say, but you also have ideas of your own. There needs to be some middle ground with this person and we might have to use the C word and it's compromise, okay? And it may only be temporary compromise. They're a bit worked up. This could be someone at work or it could be a loved, you know, a significant other. They're a bit worked up, okay? They're, they've got fires going, they need to put fires out. You maybe need to be in the Ace of Pentacles energy here because this situation's getting a bit hot to handle, but you need to stay cool and Scorpios can do that and they can't, okay? It's only a chapter in this story. That's just this part that we're looking at. 
when Mercury goes direct on October the 2nd, you'll be into a, a new era, okay? But for now, whether it's work or whether it's love, ride out this conflict. Be cool like the Fonz. I always sound so old when I say that. Be the cool one because the other person is hot-headed and then it's gonna head in a new direction. And also look into your finances, how to make them grow. There you go, Scorpio. Heard it from me first. Oh yes. Thank you, Scorpio. Okay, Sagittarius. What do we need to know for Sagittarius? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sagittarius. Saggy, Saggy, Saggy. Oh my God. You heard that I, sh I rifle shuffled, okay? She's come out for everybody. Everybody. And I know in the UK, we're kind of into autumn, seasons of mist and mellow fruitfulness and all that. I don't think Keats said, and all that, but all the same. It's weird. It's the one card that's come out, it, mostly in that position. And I'm like, I'll do an extra shuffle this time. I'll do an extra shuffle. It doesn't make any difference. Saji, I don't know if some of this came up in your September monthly. It might have done. You've got the Empress and you've got the Queen of Cups. And the Queen of Cups in the middle is kind of making a nod. Almost, you know, she's got, she's got this held up to her third eye. Sorry about that, Saji. There was a delivery man at the door. She's got her glass or her goblet held up to her third eye. And this is kind of nodding towards the Empress. It's a very divine feminine energy here. You may have some very good psychic ideas. It could be psychic business, as in um, you have a energy led business or something like that. Um, don't ignore, especially during Mercury retrograde, your weirdest hunches, okay? because the Queen of Cups gets weird hunches. That's her job. You can kind of see it. She doesn't always look like the Queen, you know, because she is dunking her feet in the water. She's got, you know, she's always gazing into a cup and like having weird thoughts and all that stuff. And then she's looking towards the Empress. And what the Empress does, because she's Major Arcana, mother figure, all four Queens put together, she says, you know, thank you. It's almost like she's a spiritual PA to the Empress. Thank you for those ideas. I'm going to make them happen, okay? Now, over here, we've got the Four of Wands, which is a portal to something very interesting. You're on the precipice of something really interesting, Saji, and don't rule out anything too weird. So if you want to learn tarot, if you want to further your spiritual business, whatever this is, go for it and don't do it small. Think big, I think is what I'm trying to say. Don't do it small. Think big because the Four of Wands is a portal. It's 11-11. It's like the portal to something magical and it's also got the fire with it and you're a fire sign. Be Sagittarian about this, okay? Now, I can't tell you what risks to take and all the rest of it, but be Sagittarian about it. You're already lucky, you're ruled by Jupiter. You don't have to live in the same mealy mouth way that everybody else does by the rules. No, put it out there and go weird, go strange, but at the same time, expect results because you're gonna get them. Oh, love that for you, Saggy. Leave me a comment, let me know how that resonates. Okay, Capricorn, hi Capricorn. Capricorn, Capricorn, Capricorn. What do we need to know for lovely Capricorn? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn. 
Capricorn. Mm, nobody else has had that one. Nobody else has had that one. Somebody else did have that one. Okay. Interesting. Got three characters here. The first thing that came to my mind, Capricorn, is, is the lion going to eat you? Okay. Which is a very weird thing for me to think. Who's the lion in this scenario then? Is this a person at work? Is this... It could be a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, or we also have Taurus here as well. And we have the High Priest or the Hierophant in the middle and the Queen of Cups. So, there's a lot going on here. This is to do with power and self-belief with the strength card, okay, about knowing yourself. For some of you, with the high priest being in the middle, you may need to buck the system and yet still fit in at the same time. This is very often in Mercury retrograde, this dualism of having to do two things at once does come up. It feels like it feels like you need to employ your kind of deepest Capricorn characteristics here because you're going to need your strength to fight this fight. And I don't really know what the fight is. For some of you, if this is about relationships, it feels like you need to get in touch with your feminine energy because we've got the Queen of Cups over here on the right kind of facing both of these people and her energy is not very palpable at times because she is you know the feminine energy she's quite hidden and quite insular but at the same time what people don't understand about Capricorns I think is that Capricorns have a very keen plugged in and decent sense of intuition you need to know how to win this battle and not get eaten by the lion. And in order to do that, you need to play by the rules to a certain extent, but also access your deepest intuition and stick with it and believe it and weave it into yourself to the point where it becomes your tower of strength. Okay. For some of you, this may be a battle at work. If it is, don't overtly go head to head with somebody. In fact, whether it's work, love or whatever, don't go head to head with somebody. This is something that can be worked out with night forces. In other words, without the light shining on it and you're coming up with things literally in the dark. Ex nihilo, as the Latins, as the Latins would say. Who's the Latins? As Latin says it, out of nothing. God almighty, my words are weird today. Okay, so you're creating something out of nothing. You've got to work out how to defeat the lion. First of all, you've got to know where the lion is and who the lion is, okay? And the lion may be the machine. It may be the way that the bank is treating you, that work is treating you, or that a personal relationship is going. And the way to beat the lion is not to have a massive battle with it out there. It's by this, what's inside. Okay, that was a strange and esoteric reading for Capricorn. Leave me a comment. Let me know how it resonates, Capricorn. Okay. Aquarius. Valentine joins us. She's an Aquarius. Here she is. Hi, Val. She loves the tarot. Loves it when she's on camera as well, actually. She's the only one of my cats who does. 
Aren't you, baby girl? You're gorgeous. Oh, crap. Sorry, I just nearly dropped all your... Oof! I just nearly dropped the tower on the floor. <laughs> Cripes. Your readings have been quite juicy. I seem to remember your September reading as being quite full on. Aquarius. I like... I'm going to spill the beans. I like reading for Aquarius. I just do. I always have. Don't know why. Maybe you're not going to like me reading for you, though, if I'm going to pull you the tower and then the devil. Sorry about that. <laughs> Cripes. Okay. So, for all the other signs, I've seen this kind of Mercury retrograde next two or three weeks has been quiet and insular. For you, <laughs> there's something going on here. We've got the tower, the devil and the seven of wands. The tower is, you know, outside influences, things happening quite suddenly, but also it's the destruction or the downfall of things that you've known weren't really quite right for some time, okay? Then we have the devil card. When we have the devil card, it tells you that there is something a bit toxic that you're experiencing or holding on to and you're going to need to fight and stand up for yourself and have very strong boundaries to be able to hold it off. If it's in relationships, this could be a very chemistry driven relationship where you, you know, those sorts of relationships, it's quite, it's very exciting, but it's also a bit destructive. And the Seven of Wands, Mars in Leo, literally you, it's what I call, it's what I call the shitty stick card. It's like, here's my shitty stick and I'm going to hold it up as a boundary. Uh, and I, I think I said to Sagittarius, I'm going to start doing it as merch. I'm going to start selling them as merch. <laughs> Get your shitty stick here. But quite seriously, you're going to need to know your boundaries around a situation. They're going to, it's going to come up. Okay. It's going to come up either in a very attraction driven way where you think I'm not sure about this and you need to have made your boundary before that happens and it gets all confusing um, but also things could just get a bit off the hook here with the tower card so you could have a flare-up in a relationship like a big argument or something and again know what you'll accept and what you won't before it comes to that because I don't think you want to have to do it in the moment it won't be very easy and essentially Aquarius, don't give in, don't stand down, you have to hold your ground, okay? That is a strong reading for three cards, a strong reading for three cards. I would very much appreciate if you left me a comment in the comment section and just let me know what your thoughts are on this. Also, the devil represents any addictions, so you may be kicking any addictions that you have that you don't want anymore. And the energy for that is really good because the tower kind of gives it vim and vigour and electricity. But for a lot of you, there is a situation arising that's going to push your buttons, it's going to trigger you. Know where you stand, okay? And don't forget your shitty stick. Thank you, Aquarius. Do check out the Gemstars membership. We've got quite a few Aquarians already. <laughs> It'd be nice to have you. The link is in the description box. Pisces. Hey, Pisces. How are you doing? I have another Pisces, I have a Pisces cat. So Minnie is my Pisces cat. She spends a lot of time asleep in plant pots in the garden. I can totally relate, totally relate. Okay, what do we need for Pisces? That one hasn't come up for anybody else. That one came up for Gemini. So you might be dealing with a Gemini. Oh, cripes. Other ones fell out and you're gonna get them. Okay, Brucey bonus for you. You're always last, so why not give you two extra cards? I know what that's like, because whenever I watch Pisces stuff, because I'm a Pisces, we're always the last one. <laughs> oh, look at this. This is nice. Be nice if they weren't doing that as well. Mm. 
Two of Wands and the Two of Pentacles here. Twos are to do with dualism, something that Pisces, Pisces, Pisces knows all about because you're two fish swimming in different directions but held together by a cord, the eternal dilemma of the Piscean. Two of Pentacles, Jupiter in Capricorn, the need to change something up. You're changing stuff up to do with finances and or you will be, you'll get the opportunity to, the way that you operate, the way that you do your finances, the way that you juggle things in the world is going to change and Jupiter is a planet of expansion so you're going to get new ideas and opportunities around this. Two of Wands, this takes you to different horizons but first of all you're going to get a choice between two different directions, okay? You create that choice it might not feel like it, but you do. Temperance, again, is a card of duality because she's often got two water jugs and she's kind of pouring two water jugs. Play with the energies of your situation. If it's a love situation, play with the energies of it rather than getting all strung up on it or hung up on it because we've got the Eight of Swords here again. A lot of the restrictions that you see in your financial life and in your love life are self-imposed beliefs. They can easily be juggled out, okay? You don't have to do the same thing as you always did before. It's time to change it up, Pisces. Pisceans are weird in that we don't like sudden change because we don't really like sudden anything. We're not very sudden people, but we like evolution and we like to constantly evolve. So just think of this as an evolution, okay? A Mercury retrograde is good for Pisces. It helps us to evolve, but we also have to take account of the past in order to do that, okay? Then we have the Ten of Cups. Yeehaw, Mars in Pisces, gorgeous. Think of this as like the end game, very positive. It's love, it's relationship, it's happiness, it's emotional satisfaction. This is like a new dawn for you. It's like a new era, okay? But first, you're going to have to be a bit brave and do some juggling, okay? Pisceans, generally, because we're mutable, quite good at changing things up. But like I said, an evolution, not a sudden change, okay? Oof, Pisces, leave me a comment. Let me know how that resonates. Thank you to everybody, Aries through to Pisces check out i've got a love reading that came out recently that's really really good that's in the description box and also the gem stars membership and anything else you need to know it's all in the description box and i will see you soon namaste